This is We The Sales Engineers Podcast, show 238. Welcome to We The SES Podcast, the show for sales engineers by sales engineers with your host, Ramsey Majaba. What's up, SC Nation? Welcome back to another episode. I have a special guest for you today, and we're, we're going to talk about a lot of different things, but my guest, his name is Cyrus Harbin. You may know him from the Tech is the New Black uh, YouTube channel and podcast and all that stuff. He's pretty new to sales engineering. He's been he's been doing sales engineering for a year. So we got to discussing about his path, his challenges, his journey, and if he likes it because sales engineering is not for everybody. And I wanted to see what he thought. And considering he's brand new, it's no better person to ask at that at the point in time. So yeah, let's just leave it there and jump into the show. Oh, one more thing. If you're looking to improve your resume, check out the link in the show notes. Uh, and it's all about how to write an awesome resume. I'll leave it there. Let's jump into the show. How are you doing, Cyrus? It's good to have hey, you on the show. Doing pretty good, Remix, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. Excited to have you here. You've been doing quite a bit. But before we get started, I would like for you to introduce yourself to the folks listening. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah, super excited to uh, be here first and foremost. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so my name is Cyrus Harbin. Uh, I am a sales engineer, uh, content creator, and um, and podcaster. Uh, so mainly what I do, I uh, I talk to different people, almost as cool as, as Ramsey here. And uh, we talk everything cool about tech, things that are happening in the tech industry uh, from the business standpoint, from different technology or software that's coming out is, uh, but most of it kind of centers, most conversations center around careers. Okay. So you said SE, content creator and podcaster. Why yes. did you say it in that order? Why did I say it in that order? Because I would not be the kind of, I would not be in this content creation space and I would not be a podcaster if it wasn't for me first and foremost being a sales engineer. So sales engineering tech in general is, is what has me doing those other pieces. So all of it is kind of built on the foundation of, of pre-sales of being a sales engineer. Okay. I'm, I'm looking at your LinkedIn. So you weren't always in tech or no. that's at least my understanding. So can you talk to me through your journey? How did you get into tech? From, yeah, from like a little bit after you were born, you know, like <laughs> little bit after somewhere, born. somewhere, somewhere there. Yeah. Day, the first week after I was born. Uh, no. <laughs> so, so uh, my background right before in tech, um, I used to do a lot of different speaking engagements, uh, mainly in like the faith based circles. And I would be at a lot of different cool events, um, different college events, relationship events all over the place. And I had I what I thought to myself was a unique idea. I said, hey, I would love to create an app where where all of these different faith based events, literally everyone who has these random events, they can all be on one one app, kind of a variation of Eventbrite. We had a few different unique aspects about what we were what we were trying to do. Uh, but that's essentially what I decided to do. And of course, hey, I didn't I didn't know anything about apps, about d creating or developing an app. So I asked around and uh, someone connected me with a guy. We ended up becoming really close. He's a developer um, and uh, amazing developer, one of the top developers in Georgia. And through our relationship is where I was becoming more and more exposed to the tech space. So I started going to different uh, tech events just out of curiosity, learning more about, hey, what is this? Because again, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'm about to be a, you know, I'm about to be a founder of a tech startup. So let me understand more about what this world looks like. And, uh, and again, this is, this was an event-based, uh, app that we were doing. And of course we all know what hit at the, at, at 2020, uh, we were supposed to launch that summer of 2020 when you know what hit it put, put it on, on, on pause, but it presented an amazing opportunity while I was kind of sitting on my hands and I was like, dang, man, this, this freaking sucks. I was like, well, I'm, I'm, I, I grown really curious and grown an affinity for the the tech space, and so I continue like watching videos and content, learning more about it. And I was like, man, I love this. I had a background in sales, so I was like, man, okay, I, I don't want to do traditional sales. Uh, my passion was for doing dim. I would do demonstrations with the 
the physical products that I would be selling in different retail spaces. So of course I ended up finding out about sales engineering. And I was like, this is the perfect blend of my skill set with sales, as well as my my passion for doing demonstrations. And I was like, yo, and I'm I'm loving tech more. So I get to kind of do technical demonstrations, things like that. So it was just it just was a no-brainer for me. So I, I found a, a a short boot camp, a sales engineering boot camp. I did that program. That was the only only way that I knew at the time to, to step step into this space. So I did that. And um yeah. And uh fast forward, now I'm just really kind of loving it in this space. Okay. So all right. I talked to a lot of people who want to become SEs or and they become SEs and they're thoroughly surprised about the role and it's not what they thought or it's too much of what they thought and it's amazing or it sucks. How how have like you've been doing this for a year and a half almost? Uh, a year now. Actually, uh, this this week was my year anniversary. October fourth is when I started at my first company. Happy anniversary! Yeah. So how, what what has surprised you about the role? And yeah, let, let's just let me stop at this question. What has surprised you about the role? Man, so it's it's interesting because half of it is the role, the other half of it is just the the culture in general of just being in this space. Uh, but to kind of touch on what surprised me about the role, one thing that I would say that surprised me about the role is you're never at a point of, of arrival. I think in most other industries, I've worked in different industries where you're expected to at some point, whether at a specific company or just in terms of your 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 knowledge uh, in that specific career, you're almost expected to reach a point of arrival. Whereas in this space, there is no point of arrival. Like it doesn't matter. Like I, you know, there are SEs, people who've been SEs for 25 years. And even when I was just only, you know, five months in, I would be able to teach things. They'd be willing to learn and hear a few things from me. Um, and of course, like obviously it was usually would be more so the other way around. Uh, but just within that, it's never a point of arrival. Um, it's uh it's a space that's that's not just evolving, but a space that's like still kind of still being birthed in a way, if that makes any sense. So it's like, you know, there are some things that are already matured, but it changes like an industry might already be mature and oh, the industry's changing. Whether whereas like this space, uh, pre-sales, sales engineering is something that it's it still feels like it's growing, both in terms of notoriety, in terms of people realizing, hey, what what it is, uh, but also it's growing in terms of what it's becoming. Uh, so it's super cool. I love it a lot. So, so the, the value, I think, of it being something where you never reach a point of arrival is that what's really like just blessed me is how it's like, oh, you don't really feel this sense of, hey, you you should know more. It's always like there's more to learn, but no one expects you to know everything. You know, even again, yeah. even people who are seniors in the space aren't expected to know everything. So with that, you're able to stay curious. You're able to constantly learn while never feeling pressured or feeling bad that you don't know everything. Yeah. I mean, the what I like to tell people is it's not that you should learn more. It's that you get to learn yes. more. Yeah, yeah right? exactly. Like we, we have the opportunity to learn crazy amounts of things in different industries. So yeah, but I, I agree with everything you said. What has challenged you? Like what has been one challenge in this one year that you've had to overcome since you first started? Uh, man, the support, weirdly enough, the support has been a challenge for me because I'm not used to receiving so much support. Uh, <laughs> it's, that, that's the opposite, generally speaking, of what most people would say. Yeah, I know. I know, but it's I, I think it's just because other industries, you know, people say, hey, reach out if you need help in other industries. But yeah. half the time, they, they don't really mean it. And when you do reach out, it's extremely limited. And but what's really been challenging is realizing, man, I really have support. So it's been challenging to me to lose the whole Lone Ranger, I'm going to do it myself thing all the right. time. It's like, wait, no, I actually have people to rely on. Uh, that I can rely on, that I can reach out to. So the thing that's been challenging for me is is not being an island to myself yep. and realizing, man, I really have support. And even if I can handle it, that doesn't mean I have to handle everything. And so the support is, that's that's uh, it's a weird thing to say, but that's been a challenging thing for me to to kind of like let go of. It's and it's, 
funny enough, I've, I've worked with SEs who've been doing this for 10 years and they still have that same problem where oh, they God. want to do everything themselves and they don't have to. And not only don't they have to, they're actually hurting the opportunity because now it's taking longer. Like they could have just reached out to someone who's, who would yeah. have helped them, done that before, help them solve the problem in 10 minutes. But now they have to reinvent the wheel, mm-hmm. which they don't have to. And when I first became an SE, uh, a senior VP of uh, director of sales told me that like the best sales teams are those who know how to leverage other people. Mm. Right. You don't yeah. have to do everything yourself. Yeah. So that's interesting observation that you, you just, so how, how did you, how are you overcoming that actually? Like how, how are you planning on not being an Island building a bridge to another, another person, another team? Yeah. So I've gotten I've gotten uh, better at it in this past year. And I guess one of the cool things about being an SE is that we it's like we exist in two worlds. I mean, we exist in multiple worlds, but even in terms of, okay, as an SE, I am usually I'm the product expert. And if nine times out of 10, if I'm on a call, I'm usually the 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 go to person on the call, uh, you know, especially if we're just talking, you know, demos or I'm, I'm attached to a call with the sales rep. Uh, so in that in, in that sense, I am the go-to person. But when it comes to the 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 entire org, the SE the the SE team in general, it's not just me. I'm not the go-to person. So what I've done is really worked on compart compartmentalizing, realizing, hey, when I'm on a call and I am the go-to person, make sure that I have that hat on, make sure that I have my game face on. But when I'm not on that call, when it's not necessarily game time, got to have your game face on. Hey, it's, hey, now you're with your brothers and your sisters in pre-sales where you can talk to them. You can open up, you can, you can ask more, you can ask just multiple questions. There's never, no such thing as too many questions. So that, but also I take note of how often, like you mentioned before, how often seeing people that have been in this space for 10 years, uh, more or less, and seeing how vulnerable they are, seeing how how often they ask questions and taking note and reminding myself, hey, they're not above asking a thousand questions. They're humble enough to admit when, they, when they're confused or when they forgot something, but they need, need to be reminded. Man, if they're willing to learn from me, then I should be 10 times more apt to, to ask them questions and learn from them. So, so- Doing that has like really helped, like having that mindset shift has helped a lot. Yeah, it's interesting that as sales engineers, our job is pretty much to ask questions. Yeah. And <laughs> it's when we meet customers, it's so easy. When we go internally, it's like, I don't want to look stupid. And yeah. that's that's a problem a lot of SEs have. It's like, they don't want to look stupid. Like, yeah. You know, people who are like, who are insecure, think like that. But people who like are confident in their abilities, they're able to be vulnerable because they don't care. They'll just ask as many questions as possible. So, yeah, hey. and it's it's ironic. It's like the the more stupid you're willing to look in terms of asking questions, ironically, the smarter you actually are because you're asking more questions. Whereas, yeah, there have been plenty of times, especially when I first became an SE, where there were questions I would need to ask, but because I didn't want to look stupid, I didn't ask it. And unfortunately, I would leave that call being stupid because I didn't ask the question. So it's uh it's it's really funny. That's how, how did you realize that? How did you come to that realization that you have support? Uh, I re- I mean, really, I realized that, of course, you, you hear it. So first and foremost, I heard it multiple times, multiple people who would just constantly ping me, ping me. Hey, I'm such and such. I, you know, hey, man, let's let's set up 15 minutes. And it was weird to me at first. I was like, well, well why is why is these random people want to meet with me all the time? Uh and then it's just like, okay, it's just them building rapport so that way I can feel more comfortable asking them for help. And so, but I think that the the thing that nothing, nothing, I guess, teaches better than um than actually making mistakes or failing. And so when what really taught me to realize, man, I, I truly, really have support were the times, oh man, just I guess what, what this this happened a couple of times. <laughs> it's happened a couple of times where <laughs> I would have a, you know, you have a demo coming up and uh, particularly the first company that I worked at where I wasn't a part of the discovery at all. The, uh, just the, the sales reps did the discovery and I would just be in on the demo. I would get the demo notes 
a day before, a few days before, sometimes okay. a month ago. And there was a demo that I had. And I thought I had it on lock. I looked over the notes and I said, man, I have my demo flow down. I said, this, I'm about to crush it. But then I, you know, I went over the notes one more time about one hour before the demo, you know, just kind of brushing up again. And then I noticed there was a word that were that was in the notes. And I was like, why did they word it like that? And then after doing a little bit of digging, I realized, oh, that's an integration. Like, so it was a word that I mistook for a, a, a feature, but it was actually an integration that I was supposed to show on the demo. And oh, I was yeah. like, I don't even have that. In, I don't have that, that environment set up already. I don't, I've never demoed that. I don't even know what that is. So of course I, I I verified this after checking with the the sales rep, um, and they were like, yeah, that's a that's an integration. They didn't know that I didn't know how to demo that, and they were like, yeah, you got it right. And I was like, oh man. So I was killing myself instead of asking asking someone for help. I was killing myself, killing myself, searching through all the resources, trying to find trying to find resources that I could check out as to how to demo this this particular uh, feature or integration, and then finally no no kidding about five minutes before the demo before we hop on the call i verify from the rest of the 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 se team that hey yeah cyrus you don't have a license for to demo that yet like you're too new and they were like yeah they said do you have a demo coming you know they're thinking it's a demo they're like they're like why you got a demo coming up and i was like uh yeah in like three minutes literally and you know, like, it just felt like the sky is falling, the sky is falling. I'm like, man, this is about to be horrible. And um, just one of the guys is like, they're like, hey, cool. I'll jump on there. I'll, I'll handle that for you. And then they, they're like, yeah, just send, just send me the uh, send me the meeting link. You know, I'll, I'll jump in. They said, I'll keep my camera off. You can demo everything else. And they said, yeah, once it gets to that part of the demo, they said, I'll just jump right in. And just that feeling of like, what? Like, wait, 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 wait. So you are technically probably on a break or doing something else. This mistake has nothing to do with you. This, this has nothing to do with you. You're not going to, you're not going to get any commission off of this. Like there's like, this is just my mistake. You're not my manager. You're just someone else who's here, who's available. And you want to make sure that I don't look bad. You want to make sure the company doesn't look bad. And them doing that. And then afterwards, them just just politely let me know. Yeah, man, anytime. They're like, anytime you run into that, let me know. I'll be there. And that ended up happening again. But the second time it happened, it was with an entirely different SC. This time it was it was with, it was with a woman um, on, on our team. And after realizing that, I was like, man, I really genuinely have support. And, and we're really a team. And so one that helped me not, not only did that help me feel more at ease with asking for help last minute, but even better, it, it helped me feel more at ease at asking for help far in advance and asking questions far in advance, realizing, man, we're really a team. No one's going to laugh at me or look at me like I'm an idiot. We're really a team and everybody's here to support one another. So I, you kind of answered the next question, but I want to dig in a little bit deeper. Yeah. And understand your thought process. If this were to happen again, if you get this discovery sheet, how what's your process today to make sure that one, you don't misunderstand the the requirements, and two, like make sure that the customer gets what they need? What is your process today? Yeah, definitely. So, so it's it's a uh, it's a little different today um, because the most recent demos I've done, I've been a part of the discovery, so that nice. helped. But the times that I haven't been a part of the discovery and if I've had any questions, uh, way in advance, I would sync with the sales rep to go over everything. So that's something that I've learned is, hey, don't just do the, the, the sync, you know, an hour before the demo or 30 minutes before the demo. Sync as early as possible. If I, if I can't be a part of the discovery, have a separate call, just myself and the sales rep for us to talk through all of the notes. Yeah. And I just talked to the notes, of course, talk through how we're going to do this, how we're going to do this demo flow together. When do they want to jump in? Things like that. Uh, so that's one thing. And then, of course, through that, once we verify, OK, there's something on here in the notes that, OK, wait, I don't know what that is. Or, hey, I don't know how to demo that. 
then from there, I, I kind of decide to make a move, whether it's something that, okay, I have the time or the bandwidth to go ahead and learn how to demo, or I can get the resource from someone, or hey, this is something we're going to have to loop someone else in on. So uh, that that's definitely what, uh, what I learned from that. How the big thing I understand here is you have to do a discovery, right? If you're yeah. part of the discovery with the customer, great. If not, you're going to have to do a discovery on the salesperson. Sales, yeah, with the salesperson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, right. And that, and a lot of times you can tell that this, when you do a discovery with a salesperson, you can tell how prepared they are by yes. the way they answer the questions. If it's, I don't know, it's like, well, dude, you didn't do a discovery. Yeah, it's true. And if true. it's, yeah, like this is how you do it. I'm like, perfect. Perfect discovery. Thank you. Yeah, and I love that. If, I love that. It's like either a discovery with the customer or a discovery with the, uh, the sales rep. That's real. Yeah. And then if neither one of them works and you still jump in on the demo, then you have to spend five minutes before the call doing a disco, disco yep. demo. Yeah. Right? And so for me personally as well, the way I see demos is another part of the discovery. Right. Uh, it's just, it's another way to gather more information. Because mm -hmm. the way I start my demo, and I learned this from a gentleman named Chris White. He's the author of The Six Habits of Highly Effective Sales Engineers. The way he starts his demos is, this is what I heard from you or from my salesperson last time. Is this accurate? Right? Like, I heard these three problems. These are the three problems you want to solve. Is this accurate? Yes. Perfect. Let's jump in. No? Oh, tell me more. Mm, right? Yeah. And, and, the, and so Chris has been on the podcast a few times. The way he does the pocket, he, he does the interviews when he's being interviewed is the same way he talks to customers. He's asked a question, he answers for a few seconds or a minute, and then he pauses and says, All right, let me know your thoughts. And that's another way of doing a discovery in the middle of a demo, in the middle of a POC, in the middle of lunch, whatever it is. It's just, it's co constant discovery. That's our job. Yeah, I love it. He says six habits, Chris White, Chris, six habits of highly effective sales engineers. Yeah, I'll send you the link after if you want. Oh, yeah. I'm going to I'll put there. it in the show notes as well. Uh, I have a YouTube video. It talks about all the books that I, I recommend for SEs. So I'll share that with you too if you want. Um, get, I'll, I'll get some. I'll, I'll pad my stats. I'll, I'll definitely need that. I'll, I'll need that for myself. And also my audience is constantly asking me, um, particularly my audience that wants to become uh, sales engineers. They're always asking me books to recommend. And there's only like one book that I usually have to recommend. <laughs> so that's... Demo to win. A demo. Oh, that's that's a good book. That's it's a good, a good book. book. Yeah, it's, it's, a good, it's focused a lot on the demo. Yeah. Uh, demonstrating to win is actually, they do talk about discovery in that book. Great demo. Also a good book. Yeah. I'll send you the link. Yeah. yeah. And I'll put the links for the listeners in the, in the show notes. I keep pointing down, but I don't know where it like somewhere. Yeah. I think it's, it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's a habit. It's a habit. Yeah. Down. <laughs> so, all right. So now you're part of the discovery process. How, like, how is being part of the discovery changed the way you think about customer meetings and doing the demo? Oh, it's significantly better. Um, I, I mean, it definitely in increases the demo performance uh, because it's no longer a game of telephone. It's no longer, oh, the sales rep is telling me what the customer said and they, yep. they misunderstood something. Uh, so on one end, it, it usually increases how good the demo could be on the other end. It also takes away any blame from the sales rep. If something goes awry, because it's like, Hey, I was there for the discovery. I was the one asking questions uh, most of the time. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so that, um, but one of the things I love about it is that it builds an early rapport with, uh, with the prospect or with the customer. And which is, I think is, is probably the greatest thing. You Why? Know, because, well, I mean, it, it's great because, uh, I mean, first and foremost, we know like people, people typically buy from who they like, you know? And so when you're able to build that rapport early on, like I, I've, I've been there where you're just thrown into a demo and the, the customer prospect doesn't know you. And it's like, first off, like while you're doing the demo, you might have, you know, they're trying to figure out your personality. You're trying to read the room, especially if there are multiple people on the on the call at once. You're trying and to the cameras are on. That you you're lucky if their cameras are on. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yes, it's a it's a prayer and a wish that the cameras are on. So yeah, <laughs> the cameras are off and then it's quiet. It's like, okay, I just said like a dad joke during the demo. It's like, are they quiet because they're laughing? Or are they thinking this guy's an idiot? Or are they thinking, dude, shut up and just show us <laughs> like just, just 
you know, so um, it, it's interesting. But yeah, so being a part of the discovery is wonderful for, for just many different reasons. But but in my opinion, I think it's best really to have that rapport. So now, OK, we, 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 we talked for an hour, hour and a half. Um, you know, I we, we I understand your, your pain points. You understand me. Uh, we've kind of gone through those pieces. So now, hey, when we when we jump on the demo, it's like, hey, like we're seeing someone that we are like, hey, guys, we like you. Hopefully you like us based on the the disco that we had. It seemed like we had a really great conversation. Uh, so this is uh, this is really great. Also, I've noticed that canceled. Uh, th there are fewer cancellations in terms of uh, the prospect canceling the demo whenever. What were you saying? I, I just said interesting. I've actually never heard that before. So keep going. Yeah, yeah. That's something that, that I've noticed. Uh, so particularly whenever there's like a sales rep that, that isn't as personable, they're just kind of more by the numbers where if they are the only ones who are part of the discovery and then we have a demo that's set up, I've seen demos get canceled versus, okay, we're, we're on the discovery. We've built the rapport, built the relationship with this uh, customer or prospect. Then it's like, Slightly fewer cancellations, um, demo yeah. cancellations I've seen happen. So, is it cancellations or rescheduling? Well, well both. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah I'm, 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 yeah, I'm thinking like, hey, it's easier to cancel a, a meeting than it is to say no to a salesperson sometimes. Maybe that's why. That might, right. you, that, that actually might be right. Yeah. Okay. So, something about building rapport. I want to add that the more rapport you build, the more information you get. It's not just about buying in the end. But if they trust you, they're going to tell you things that they may not tell other people, which is great. And w one thing I do for, I so I do, you, you've seen me so far. We've talked a couple of times. Dad jokes galore. Like, that's my thing. Right? And the way I make sure to get interactions in meetings, especially if everyone's on mute, especially if uh, everyone has cameras off, I try to call people by name and ask them questions and I invite yeah. conversations from beginning to end. So that way, when I make a dad joke, they're a little bit more comfortable. They're used to talking versus me just talking in a demo. They fall asleep. Like, I'm pretty sure someone walked away. Someone went to, and took a nap. I, if I don't ask them questions, I can't tell. Yeah. yeah. So these are just a couple no, of things. That's good. No, that'll definitely uh, be helpful. I've definitely noticed a difference of uh, people interacting more when I, of course, of course, you know, using their name and things like that in the demo makes a bit better connection. But yeah, I've never thought about the notion of, 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 okay, before telling jokes and stuff during the demo, getting them to talk a little bit more and getting them to interact more. So that way the ice is maybe broken even more, you know, even during the demo. I mean, I tell jokes throughout. I, I mean, uh, so I start my, my, the, every meeting, I usually start with a joke or two, right? Mm -hmm. And they may not land or they may land and no one says anything. But as we go on and we start having conversations, I'm, I'm just basically getting them used to, like, it's okay to get off mute and say what you want. And I try to encourage that. Like, hey, this is not a speech. I'm not a public speaker. I'm a public asker, right? Public I'm, asker. I'm, I'm here to understand what you need. If I'm on the wrong track, I want to know. So please make sure to ask your questions as we go along. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure to ask you questions to make sure you're paying attention to me. Yeah. Okay. And that's how I usually start off the the demo. Mm -hmm. And we go through it. So I'm, in, I'm trying to get them to, first off, get used to me, feel comfortable with me, mm -hmm. understand that I can take a joke, even if they don't like the joke. They can, I can be serious as well. So, you know, that's how I, I've, I've done some jokes in person where I wish I was on a Zoom call because then I'd have the, like, <laughs> the thought that maybe they just, uh, they're on mute because I've, I've said dad jokes where they just look at me. It's like, dude, you're, you're stupid. <laughs> All right. I'm not that's joking that, with these people. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> um. So like, what else have you felt about like, the one year experience of sales engineering how do you feel about that in the next five years are you are you conf confident that you want to continue this route what are your thoughts yeah definitely i mean i, I couldn't really see myself i couldn't really see myself doing anything else i mean may, maybe maybe product but i just still am not even really sure about that because i i really enjoy uh, I, I truly enjoy, I mean, first and foremost, I enjoy customer facing, um, customer facing roles. I love that a lot. And I 
really enjoy demoing. I enjoy creating the demo, creating the demo flow. I enjoy the dis the discovery, asking questions. Uh, it's really exciting tailoring a story, like creating a story, especially just the different customers and in different industries that you get to interact with. And yeah. so, so it's like every story, even if you're using the same product, you know, that your company's product, it's, you know, yeah, we can, we can talk about how, okay, each customer, you might have to highlight certain different features that are tailored to them. But I think even more, more uniquely is tailoring a different, it, it could be the same feature that you, you, you tailored or that you use for the last demo, but the story has to be told differently because this customer is in a different industry and because their pain point is different. So they might need the same feature, but their pain point is different. And so tailoring and weaving that story together. And, you know, again, my, my background being at like, you know, doing poetry and, and being at different events and things like that, you live for the crowd reaction. When you say a line that you wrote and you wrote the line, hoping that it would hit and penetrate in the audience, you would hear people in the audience gasp or hear someone in the audience say, oh my God, that was crazy. Or someone react when they finally, you know, kind of catch a line or realize what you were saying with a certain metaphor. And demoing is, is that same thing when you tailor a demo to a prospect. And then even, it, it, it's almost even cooler sometimes when their camera's off, because again, like I, I hate it, but I, but, I, but I love it sometimes because you, you, you'll showcase something and because the camera's off, you can't see their reaction and then you'll hear them. And they're just like, oh my God. They're like, you know, they'll they'll call out someone else that's in the meeting. They'll be like, Bill, this is what we were looking for. This is what we need. And it's just that feeling that 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 rush of that dopamine rush that hits you where it's like, man, we got it. You know, we were able to help them. We were able to show them something that that's really going to address what they need. And it's like, man, I just can't think of I'm just unaware of any other role in this beautiful space in the software industry, love it here, but I just can't think of any role that, that gives you the opportunity to, to do something like that. It's so freaking cool. Like God bless the developers who do an amazing job uh, of, 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 of coding, of, you know, coding and, and developing the, the products and the features. God bless the, the product team that, you know, that, that, that you know, that puts out the, the features and, and the, the QA testers that test everything out uh, before everything goes to, to GA Everyone, you know, we're all a team and all weaves perfectly together. But man, the opportunity uh, of being an SE, it's just to actually be right there with the customer and prospect and to actually see their reaction, hear their reaction. It's like, man, there's nothing like it. It's incredible. I enjoyed listening to you, to you speak right now. So yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was fun for me. Ooh. Let let me ask you. Like, I want to shift. A little, I don't know what how to top that off, but I want to shift gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of the same reason you started Tech Is the New Black? So, I started in, to some degree. So, of course, Tech Is the New Black isn't um uh, isn't just uniquely focused uh to SEs. Uh, so yeah, the, the whole purpose of Tech Is the New Black is realizing that many people aren't aware of how cool this industry is like just the the tech industry as a whole and of course most people think of of tech and they think of it in like uh so so I'm a, I'm a marine corps veteran and what's really interesting is how people who most people who don't serve in the military they think that if you're in the military or if you join the military during wartime they think your job is to fight in the war and it's i know the majority of people in the military their job isn't fighting in the war their job is to support, their job is to be a, a truck driver, supply, food, whatever. And it's so interesting how most people who, who haven't had the privilege or the opportunity to step into this space, they typically think, oh, if you're in tech, it's, you know, you know, of course you have to program, you have to code, which that's, that's cool. But many times their idea of it is old school corporate, you know, something boring with hardware something boring or traditional e even when it comes to like software uh and so one of the things i love about tech is new black is people realizing man the different careers that are in this space uh but also realizing man the, the opportunities in this space in terms of of course like you know income how it can change a lot of people's lives uh, as well as in terms of other things people can do it's like man 
you know, again, the more I learn about this space, whether being a sales engineer or just diving deeper in tech as a whole, the more I'm learning more about business, the more that I'm learning about people and interacting with people. So the whole idea of Tech is New Black is really just showing people, man, just that there's more to this space than what you thought there was. Uh, and so it's really cool. So yeah, definitely I see a huge reaction for people all the time of them saying, man, I didn't realize, didn't realize this. I mean, the, the things like, you know, the, it's so weird. Cause even, uh, in, in my head, I know I love this so much. And I was like, man, I think everyone else will love it too. But I was like, maybe I'm just crazy. But of course, like putting out content and seeing the reaction and realizing, okay, I'm not that crazy. I'm crazy, but I'm not that crazy. You're people normal crazy. Really yeah, normal crazy, a little normal yeah. crazy. And so, yeah, realizing the reaction from people of people saying, man, I need something like this, man, I, man, I, this is something that we didn't know we needed, but we're so grateful we have it now. And so uh, that, that's something that I see a lot with people that don't realize how cool, just how cool this world is. It's like, man, this is really dope. All right. Like, okay. So this has been great. And uh, there are so many gems that you say that I just can't keep up. Uh, but one thing I got out of our, my conversation with you is you pretty much love what you do, mm -hmm. both aspects from sales engineering and helping other engineer, helping other people understand what, what their, what future could be for engineers, sales engineers and all that. So yeah. uh, I usually leave that question till the end, but since you, since we brought it up, where can people find tech is the new black and what, what should they expect out of the content that you provide there? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So you can find Tech is the New Black on YouTube. Uh, we just crossed over the the, the $20,000 um, uh, subscriber um, threshold. So we're hype about that. My team and $20,000? So no, no, no. 20,000 um, subscriber. <laughs> yeah, I heard $20,000 subscribers. Oh, something. maybe I did say dollar. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I did. <laughs> I, just, I just want to make sure. All right, cool. <laughs> Congratulations on the 20,000 subscriber. That's work. Funny. Yeah, yeah, we're excited about that. Yeah, so YouTube, Spotify, uh, TikTok, Instagram, um, those are the, the main places that we're at. In terms of what you'll see, uh, you'll see interviews uh, where I'm interviewing uh, recruiters. So again, this is, you're getting a glimpse at the studio. Most people don't see this side. Everyone thinks it's literally, people People think I'm in a studio. So when you watch it, it'll look like we're in a, in a whole studio set, but this is my yeah. second bedroom. I literally got a second bedroom so that I could just turn it into um, a podcast studio. Uh, so yeah, by the, for people for people listening on the podcast, you might want to go on YouTube and check out uh, the the room behind. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yes, yeah, uh, definitely cool. So yeah, you'll see uh interviews you'll see or hear depending on where you're uh, checking us out at. Uh, hear interviews with different tech recruiters. Uh, like we uh, interviewed a Microsoft recruiter recently. People who are on product sales engineers. I just uh, interviewed just dropped an interview with a, a sales engineer who just got in the space. Uh, and uh, we just did some interviews that we haven't dropped yet with some people that are seniors in cybersecurity, cloud nice. architects, uh, and people who actually have startups as well. So part of it is part of it is, of course, talking about different careers in tech, talking about how to scale in tech, and then the third arm is is different founders. So that way, if there's anyone who, hey, you're like, man, I would love to to have a create a startup someday. Uh, we're interviewing like you know founders of brand new startups uh as well so so all of it is just encompassed whether it's about man you want to break into tech you want to scale in tech or you want to actually create uh create some type of software or some type of software uh related business nice all right man it is time to move on to the not so fire round these are the same four questions i ask almost every guest okay and they're i call them not not so fire round because i usually take my time and i dig into them so Let's get started. Uh, question number one, what is your superpower? My superpower, oh man, my superpower is, uh, I think it's, I think, I think my superpower is my energy. Um, I think I would say it's probably my energy. Um, so I'm, even if I'm in a, even if I'm in a not so good mood, uh, per, so is this a superpower related to being, being a SE or whatever made you successful in life. Okay. Okay. I would say, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. Same thing. I, I would say my superpower is, is my energy in, in terms of particularly like me having a uh, high energy, even when I'm not in the best mood, 
um, pretty good at kind of like shoving my ish to the side and being like, hey, this person I'm talking to right now, you know, they deserve a they deserve a good version of me right now. They yes. deserve a great interaction. So I think that's a superpower that I have is that version of being able to compartmentalize. Cool, cool. Uh, so uh, the second question is, you've you've raved so far about sales engineering in general, how much you love it, and that the one struggle you've had was a positive thing, which kind of pissed me off. Uh, so, uh, well, it was what, it was it was it was positive in terms of. The sales engineering space. My struggle has been the fact that that sales engineering yeah, yeah. provides so much support. Yeah, yeah. I have too much help. I'm so sad. <laughs> uh, I, so, what don't you like about the role? Oh man, uh, I don't. I don't like. Uh, <laughs> I don't like always having. Uh, I don't like always having to study. <laughs> <laughs> always always having to study it's like oh man it's like man can my can my company please stop like acquiring other companies and 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 building out new products and features that i gotta learn to do <laughs> so, so we basically went from we get to study to now we have to study okay yeah so you know what it's particularly because there's a lot of cool stuff i like i like studying the cool stuff where it's like oh right. man i can't wait to demo that but it's like other stuff that I'm like, ah, oh, man, do I have to, do I have to learn that? <laughs> yeah, but it's like, oh yeah, I guess I kind of have to. So, yeah. well, it, here's, here's what I found. Some of the things that you find cool, others might not. And yeah. some of the things that other might find cool, you will not. So yeah. if you focus on what you find cool and others focus on what they find cool and work together, leverage each other, you will mm -hmm. both be successful, successful faster. That's true. Yeah. And that's why that's why it's good to not feature dump or throw out a bunch yeah. of features that the prospect didn't ask about, because I think it's cool. They'll think it's cool, too. And they're just like, why are you showing us this? There was one SE who would start. I want to show would start uh, like something by saying, I want to show you this cool feature and no one would care. I'm like, dude, it's cool to you. Like, you, hey, you want to say, like, I think this thing is the best thing since sliced bread. I want to show it to you. You tell me what you think. Maybe you'll hate it. I don't know. But I, I, I want to show it to you because I find it useful. That's a different story than I want to show you this cool feature. It's not cool. All right. Yeah. Uh, so question number three, we've already touched on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But is there a resource you recommend for sales engineers to read, listen to, wh whatever it is? Yes. Uh, so, yeah, I know, I know one I mentioned is Demo to Win. Uh, two, there are different... So I, I I think the best resource, oh man, in terms of being a sales engineer, that's that's tough. So so th this is this is my thought behind it. This is my thought process. In my opinion, I think something that's very helpful for sales engineers are for them to every now and again step out of just the SE space and to network and interact with people that aren't sales engineers for the purpose of fully understanding, not just, of course, we, we're supposed to know the sales cycle, but understanding the business as a whole, understanding, you know, the other, other gears in the, in the entire um, other, you know, gears in the, uh, in the cog of, of like your company and knowing other people and knowing uh, how other people's job works and things like that. Uh, so I think that's something that's incredibly beneficial uh, for, for numerous reasons. Uh, but even from the notion of it, Pretty every now and again, you're gonna need to reach out even beyond your SE team to talk to the product team, you know, or to just talk to various people in your company. And when you have an understanding of their job, their shortcomings, their struggles, some of the things they have to face, overall, it makes you a better resource in in different different uh, areas and ways. So I think that's something that I was I was gonna kind of jump and be like, oh, this podcast or this thing. But I think like some of those things are, I'm trying to think of something I think might be pretty unique for, for your audience. Something that's helped me a lot, at least. I, I think that's perfect. Like, podcasts are amazing, right? Yeah. But you can't ask them questions. If you do, you can ask one question and you can't do follow-ups. Having people that you can go to and when you ask a question and they respond and you still don't understand that you can follow up is much better than, I mean, I want people to listen to my podcast. Don't get me wrong. Listen to this podcast, but still get some other resources as well. So I like that. Yeah, Last nice. question of the not so fire on Cyrus. Let's is go. there a habit you're working on today to improve in your personal or professional life? 
Yes, 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 yes. Uh, just discipline, discipline over everything. Uh, discipline over how I'm feeling, you know, of course, not absent of my feelings. Uh, you know, our, the way we feel matters, um, but something just, just truly being disciplined, sticking to my schedule, having a schedule, even outside of my working, you know, okay. so really important, you know, cause I mean, cause discipline over just submitting to how we feel is valuable because we learn to not be subject to our feelings all the time. Uh, so how do you, how do you build that habit? How do you build the habit of discipline? My, I mean, it, it starts like one day at a time. So it's not something that, so, so, so building it f- first and foremost for myself is to be, a, be, be around people that are disciplined. So having friends and people that are in my life that I know that, that have like a schedule, even when they're not working, they have a schedule, they have things that they have on schedule to do where nothing will go wrong if they don't do it, but it's because they have it on their schedule. They decided they're going to do it at a particular time. So one, having those people in my corner, in, in my circle, so I'm motivated to be more disciplined as they are. Uh, the second component of that is rewarding myself. So that's been something that's helped a lot is letting is is rewarding and punishing myself. So it's like, hey, hey, I have, I, I have to do these things today. These are other things I don't have to do but I have on my schedule to do them. They're going to make me better at my job, better in my relationship, better just in some area of my life. And the reward I'm going to give myself is tonight I'm going to play video games or tonight I'm going to watch this show. But if I don't do it, or if I don't do it on the time I said I was going to do it, then I'm not, I'm going to forego those things instead as a way to remind myself, Hey, you are a disciplined person and you need to be working better at being disciplined. That's that's an interesting take. I have to digest that. All right. As I'm digesting it, Cyrus, mm-hmm. was there a question you were hoping I was going to ask you today, but I didn't? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm very surprised you haven't asked me how I got my beard so luxurious. Usually that's like the... All right. And that's the end of the show. First, second, or man, at the least the third thing. <laughs> All right. Um, Cyrus? A question just popped in my brain. Um, how how do you get that beard so luxurious? <laughs> what, was it was it a good question? It seems like a good question. I don't know. It's like the that's, Holy Spirit came and that, talked that, to me. That was a very original. That was a very original question. <laughs> uh no, nah, man. It, this is this has been freaking phenomenal. Um, no, nah, uh, no, nah, there, there wasn't a. Uh, you, you definitely asked me some things that I, I wasn't um, even thinking. I guess I was kind of thinking through some of the things you're going to ask, but you definitely asked some things that I wasn't really uh, thinking thinking through or wasn't, I'm not going to say wasn't prepared for, but yeah, just definitely kind of surprised me, caught me by surprise. Well, I hope that's a good thing. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed all your answers, Cyrus. If people want to reach out and connect with you, where can they do that? Yeah, so I'm heavy, uh, heavily on Instagram. It's a, uh, I'm just Cyrus, not I am just Cyrus. It's I'm just Cyrus. That's I M J U S T C Y R U S. Uh, so that's where I'm pretty, pretty heavy at uh, okay. half the time. People message me on LinkedIn and I'm like, Hey, what's up? Can you message me on Instagram? Cause I'm about to jump off of here. <laughs> that happens a lot. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll leave that in the show notes for people to, to reach out and connect with you if they do. Um, I really appreciate your time, Cyrus. I had I had so much fun. I hope you did as well. Yeah, and, no, this uh, is great. I'll see you soon. Awesome. Yeah, great. Thank you, Cyrus, for coming on. It was great fun. Cyrus and I ended up talking for quite a bit after the call, which I feel like we should have recorded that part as well. But you know, it was a good private conversation. I really enjoyed talking to Cyrus. He's he has a lot of great energy. We were wearing similar shorts, even though we both looked like we we're wearing very formal uh, wear on top. So it was a, uh, it was it was just great talking to Cyrus. Let me know what you thought. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me, is there something that you've learned? W- were you one of those people who thought yourself as an island that you have to do everything yourself? How did you overcome that? If you have overcome that, if you haven't, what's your plan to overcome it? What are some other challenges that you're facing as a sales engineer, uh, whether you're experienced or brand new? Let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Maybe you'll be on the podcast one day uh, in. That's it. I, I really I really hope you enjoyed the show as much as I enjoyed talking to Cyrus. With that, I'm just going to sign off.